Okay, folks, so tonight we're going to check the um, RF transformers. So we've got the number one RF transformer right here. And uh, on the this is the actual transformer coils here. And the way we're going to be able to do this is this side of the transformer here actually goes to our tuning condenser. So I've got those the tuning condensers are off of the chassis right now as you've seen in the previous video um, I've already cleaned all that up so what I'm gonna do is grab this wire right here that goes to the tuning condenser and we'll go from that one to the chassis and we'll be able to check and see if that's open and then on this one on this side of it we have the green wire going to the short antenna and then a red wire going to the long antenna so I can check for continuity between those two and between each of those and and chassis we're going to do that on number one we're going to do the same basically some very similar checks on number two same wire coming off the transformer going to the tuning condenser Still going down to the chassis. We have the green wire. And we have the other end of the blue. And then we have the red with the white tracer going down to the local distance switch. And then on the number three, RF, same thing. I check them basically all the same. So we'll take a look at these and see how they're doing. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is those are the IF cans covering the transformer. And this is the wire I was telling you that I'm going to catch on each one of these. Each of the cans has, not that wire, but the wire that goes to the tuning condenser. You can see them on down the line. So I'm on the, the first... Uh, RF wire there on that can so I was just showing you that's how I'm going to be checking these so each time I come back to do one I will have already connected my jumper wire up underneath there so that's what we're doing okay I think I've got it so you guys can see my meter here and I've got my negative lead hooked up to the first RF transformer um, a wire that goes to the tuning condenser and so what we're doing is that one the other side goes to chassis ground so I'm just going to touch my chassis here we're running about 3.2 ohms so at least we know that one's not open so now I can disconnect my negative lead there I need to move this up for you guys can see where I'm going with this Hopefully I didn't just move my meter off screen for you. Okay. So these are the two leads, the red and the green that I showed you earlier uh, from the first RF here. I highlighted all the RFs on here so it was easier for me. But these two terminals here are the antenna terminals. So we'll go between the two antenna terminals first. We have about 0.3 ohm, so we know that's not open. And then we'll go from each one of these to chassis ground. 0.3 ohm on that one. Point 0.4 to 0.5 on that one to the chassis ground. So we know that that coil is not open. So now we'll move on to the second RF. Okay, so I've moved my negative lead to the second RF wire to the tuning condenser down there at the can underneath. And we will go to chassis ground on this one. About 3.1 ohms, about what it was on the other one. 
so we know that one's not open. Now I move my leads to the other side of the coil, which is this terminal and this terminal. Got about 69.2 ohms, so we're not open there, so we're good on the second. Now I'm going to move to the third. Let me situate my wire. Okay, so I've got my negative lead on the, again, the wire from the side of the transformer that would go to the tuning condenser for the schematic and we'll touch, go to chassis ground about 3, 3.1, 3.0 we've been, we've been 3, 3.1 on ohm so that one's not open so now we'll move to the other coil side to these two right here We're 71, 71, we were 69 on the previous one, so that one's not open. So the first RF, the second RF, and third RF transformers are all good. So right now we're good because we know the power transformer is good and the RF transformers are good. Now we got to move on to the interstage transformer and the um, output transformer. Let me get set up for that. Okay, one I almost forgot about was the detector plate RF choke, which is actually the little one right here, the little coil right here. So we're going to check that. We've got about 34 and a half ohms, so that's not open, so that's good. Now let's move on to the interstage and the output transformers. Those are the ones I'm holding my breath on. Okay, now we're going to take a look at this uh, output transformer, the second AF um, auto frequency output transformer. And um, looks like we can touch the, get our ends of a primary coil at the plates of the 45 tubes. The round wires on the plates of the 45 tubes. And then um, the other side of that coil is at the speaker socket plug, the yellow and black tracers. So let's go see if we can figure that out. We also have a, a tap on that. I'll have to come back and look at the tap. Let's worry about the two sides of it first, and we'll check the tap out. Okay, so here is our 245 sockets. These two are the heater pins. This should be the plate and this should be the um, grid. So we're going to check here and here for the one side of the coil. And then the speaker plug is right here. And there's the yellow with the black tracer, that terminal right there. And the other one is coming out through here. This is where the transformers are. Coming right here and connecting to the chassis. That nut right there. So that's where we'll check between those two. So let me get this hooked up. Okay, hopefully we're in camera enough that you guys can see that. Alright, so first we're going to do the one side of the uh, AF help with transformer to the plates of the 45s. 266 ohms and then we'll go catch the other side at the plug which I'm off screen so you can't see that get John a little bit better hopefully that overhead fluorescent lights not washing out that meter so we're right here on this yellow and black tracer wire and I'll grab the other one right here we're about 0.3 ohms, so the good news is that transformer is not open, which is the one with that quality condenser. So that means i got to be extremely careful when I do that. Now let me go check out this other one. Let me get set up for that one. 
Okay, so I thought I was recording and I wasn't recording. So I'm not sure how much of what I actually did get or not. But let's try it this again. So according to the schematic, the other side of that coil, or the side of the coil that we had the, the 267, I believe it was, ohms, which was the plates of the 45s. Yeah, 267. I think that's where we were just at. Yeah, 267. Remember there was a, a um, tap, center tap? Okay, so the center tap is black with a white tracer, which is this one right here, which goes over to this pin right here on the filter caps. So we should be able to check it right here to the back to the plates, and we should be about half. So there's 145.1. To that one and 121.5 on that one so 141 121 was that 266 121 145 yeah yeah 266 so we're at 267 so that side of the coil is good now the opposite side of the coil was going to the plate of the 80 which is over here and the black with the red tracer which is this wire right here coming to this fuse and we got 51,000 ohms on that so that side of that coil seems to be good so it appears both the output transformer and the input transformer are both good so that puts pressure on me so that when I take this um, quality condenser out. I gotta melt that out. I gotta be extremely careful so I don't screw these coils up. So that'll be the next step is to mark these wires and get this coil off of here. I shall come back. Okay, so I thought I was recording and I wasn't recording. So I'm not sure how much of what I actually did get or not. But let's try this again. So according to the schematic, the other side of that coil or the side of the coil that we had the, the 267, I believe it was, ohms, which was the plates of the 45s. Yeah, 267. I think that's where we were just at. Yeah, 267. Remember there was a, a um, tap, center tap? Okay, so the center tap is black with a white tracer, which is this one right here which goes over to this pin right here on the filter caps. So we should be able to check it right here to the back to the plates, and we should be about half. So there's 145.1 to that one, and 121.5 on that one. So 141, 121, was that 266? 121, 145, yeah. Yeah, 266, so we're at 267, so that side of the coil is good. Now, the opposite side of the coil was going to the plate of the 80, which is over here. And the black with the red tracer, which is this wire right here, coming to this fuse. And we got 51,000 ohms on that. So that side of that coil seems to be good. So it appears both the output transformer and the input transformer are both good. So that puts pressure on me so that when I take this um, quality condenser out, i got to melt that out. i got to be extremely careful so I don't screw these coils up. So that will be the next step is to mark these wires and get this coil off of here. I shall come back. Okay everybody, what I got done is I went ahead and I got the audio output um, and interstage transformer can removed from the, from the chassis. Came through the hole right there. I went ahead and I marked everything as I was taking it off. I like the little number tags that I use here. And then I went through and I documented what all the ohms were on everything because once I get through melting this tar out 
and snipping the cap, assuming I get that far and don't screw everything up, and I get it all done, I gotta recheck everything as far as my ohms and make sure I didn't cause any issues uh, by melting the the uh, the cap out. So next step is me taking this out to the garage, setting it up. I'll get a tripod out there to put the camera on and we'll heat this thing up, see if we can get the tar out, see if we can find that cap and cut it out without totally screwing everything else up. So I'm going to head out to the garage and we'll see what we can do. Okay, so I'm out in the garage. I've got you guys set up on a tripod. I think based on some video that I watched that this quality capacitor is in this vicinity right here. This is the top of the um, audio output transformer. So it's sitting in their diagonal. The one below it is the interstage and it sits in there like this. So I'm not trying to melt the whole tar out because I don't want my coils to come loose, my transformers to come loose, but I do want to get enough tar out of this vicinity here to see that quality capacitor and get to where I can snip one of the leads without screwing up the transformer. Now, you can't see it, but I'll show you. I've got a, a bucket on the floor that I'm going to catch the tar on. This will probably be very stinky and very smoky, but that's why we're out in the garage. So we're just going to start, I'm just going to start heating it and we'll see what happens. And I'll speed through this so you guys don't have to suffer through waiting for everything to heat up, but we're going to see what we can do with this. So here we go. Okay, so I've got to where I can see something, <clears throat> just not sure if it's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm not sure how you guys can see this out of that camera, but there's a hollow looking device looking thing right here. Let me get something I can point it out with, hopefully. Right here. But it looks like almost like a piece of loom and it could be a wire there my concern is it is a wire there my concern is I don't know if that's the quality capacitor right there or if that is one of the coil wires actually right there I hate to cut the wire and, and figure out that I cut one of the coil wires and the quality capacitor is attached to the coil wire so that could be like where the coil wire is coming out of the coil and going to it but I'm not sure what I got yet so I want to try and burn a little bit more out of there and see if it becomes more apparent what I'm looking at because right now it's not real apparent what I'm looking at and my concern is I'm going to cut the wrong thing I'm not even sure if that's the quality capacitor at this point in time. I think it still be up there. It doesn't have a good outline to it for me to be able to tell what I'm looking at. It doesn't look like what I've seen in the pictures online, which I'll throw on there, drawing a guy did online, on mine, so you guys can see it. But I'm going to continue to heat this. Hope I don't burn the coil up in the process. But, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Okay, so this is where we're at right at the moment. I wasn't sure if that was it or not, so I decided to melt some out up here. And as you can see up here, here's the coil portion of that transformer. Over here you can see the coil portion of the transformer. I think you can. I'm not sure what angle I've got you at. Let's see if I can get you moved around here a little bit. 
<clears throat> so there's the upper portion of that coil for that transformer right there and here's that portion of the coil of the transformer now what I was talking about earlier if I can get my flashlight where you guys can see this this is definitely a wire right here and this definitely looks like a wire right here so I'm assuming that that is going to be the quality capacitor but everything that I saw showed the wires coming out the bottom of that quality capacitor and going into the coil. <clears throat> My concern is If I cut, just cut the wire, that I might be cutting the doggone um, wire for the coil. Very concerning here. I need to go get me a screwdriver, see if I can kind of move little things around a little bit and figure anything else out. Hold on, let me go get something else. So what I've done is I've hooked my meter up to my two wires that go to the plate of the 45s from 317 ohms. Those were originally like, I think, 267. So obviously heating it up helped it some. Um, but once I figure out if these look like wires to me, which they do, it definitely changes the meter a little bit when I mess with that. I don't want to pry around in here too much because it makes me nervous, very nervous as a matter of fact. It could be insulation off the wire I'm moving. It does look like insulation off the wire I'm moving. I cut that wire and it's not the uh, cap wire but the coil wire I will have just screwed the pooch here and the idea is that's why I got the meter out there and hooked up to it I want to when I cut the wire here I want to see <laughs> If I lose my continuity, because if I do, that means I just cut the dang coil wire, which again is not something I want to do. There's the other wire right there. See, there's two wires there, one there and one there. And boy, I'm thinking those are probably the coil wires because of the way they're going down. <clears throat> The condenser quality cap is in parallel. So these wires could be coming from the quality cap and going down to the quality condenser or I mean, they're not in series, they're in parallel, so unless these go down to the quality cap and then down somewhere low in the can, lower in the can below the quality cap, they're tied in. I don't know. I'm just really nervous about cutting either one of those wires, but i got to cut it. One way or another, i got to cut it. i cut one of them, just to see. I either get lucky and it, I still have continuity, or I don't get lucky, and ah, I screwed the pooch on it. Got my weapons of mass destruction here. I feel like I'm defusing a bomb here, like they do in the movies, and they got the countdown going on. 
which wire do I cut? I see two there. In worst case scenario, what happens? I screw the whole doggone transformer assembly up, right? And I gotta put a new transformer in it. Ah. Got a choice of two wires, the only two I see. I don't know if I could fix one if I cut it and I screw it up. Well, you're going to watch me do it. I'm going to choose the lower one. If my meter goes dead, then we know that. You know what they say, no guts, no glory. Here goes nothing. Well, the meter's still alive. I cut the wire, you can see it's cut. Right here. See there's an end and there's an end. Now it don't mean that <laughs> it doesn't mean that uh I didn't just cut something else, but right now at least I still have continuity in three hundred and nine ohms. Let's test these other wires. Leave you on camera. Okay, so I'm between the plates of the 45s right now. I'm going to go to the tap. One sixty-eight. That looks good. All right. Let's go to the other side of the cap. Cap. One forty. Whew, I might have just dodged a bullet, folks. Now, I'm not going to breathe any relief because those could have been wires going to the other transformer. So, let me um, hook up to those and see what we get. Well, I'm going to go. Uh, let's see, these should be the input transformer, 77K, or 7.7K, 7700, that's good, that's what I had, now let's go to the center tap on that one. Three point five six, so that's good. And this one. Four point two. We're good there. So now I got one other set of wires to go to. Let's see what we get with that. Point four point five. That's exactly what I had. All right. Wow, folks. I I dodged the bullet. Bullet. You talk about sweating some bullets there. Oh, I looped those, looped those wires off, snipped them off, and I was like, sure as heck, I'm killing this thing. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and cut another little piece out of that just to make darn sure that they can never touch again. and uh, call out a day. Wow. There's a piece. And there's a piece. There's no way those will ever make contact again. Huh. Wow. Okay. Now, my plan is, at this point, I could just leave that like that and put the cap, can't top the can back on it. But I think what I'll do is go ahead and melt some wax and put in the top of that. I got plenty of wax. I'll just pour some wax in on top of that. To seal it back up again. But uh there's that. Alright. Wow. So I'll go ahead and stop this now and I'll bring you back once I get the top of the can sealed off with some wax. So I got me some paint. I know it's not the right darkness. I got this rust oleum advanced formula in dark called dark brown 
but it's the darkest brown I could find. I'm sorry, I wasn't holding it where you could see it, but yeah, it's the darkest brown I could find. I'm going to go ahead and shoot the um, condenser can that we already worked on a few videos again, and then this coil can that I just got through cutting that wire into the quality condenser. I'm going to go ahead and shoot the paint on this because I don't have too many more days out here in the garage that I can be warm enough to paint this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot it today. And uh, like I said, I know this paint is not dark enough for this, but it'll have paint on it anyway. And I'll just go from there. I cleaned it all up with some paint there, sanded it down. I didn't show you the sanding process. I used 400 grit sandpaper and my brass brush and then wiped it down with paint there. We'll see what happens here. Like I said, I know this isn't going to be dark enough, but at least it'll have paint on it and be clean. So, I just put it on here and it'll be what it is. Right? It'll at least look better than it did. do it without getting runs, I'd be happy. <clears throat> Using my pizza box here, the um, all those wires that were in the transformer fall can, I stuck them inside the pizza box. So, they won't get paint on them. I get carried away sometimes and try and get too much on there the first time around. That don't look too bad for a first coat anyway. second coat. That's what I'm shooting for. Decided while I'm out here in the garage I might as well melt the wax, the beeswax, and go ahead and pour in this um, transformer can. I seal it back up. So right now I've got my beeswax in the house in the microwave melting it down. So, when that gets done melted, we'll pour it on there. This paint looks like it's drying okay. You know, the more I look at that without having it, you know, next to the inside that was so dark, it doesn't look bad. I, I don't know that that's that far off. It may very well be, but I can live with it. I'm not selling this, I'm doing this for myself, so as long as I'm doing it for myself and I'm happy with it, that's all that matters. Do things that make you happy. Life's too short to not be happy. So, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go and check on my wax, I'll be right back. Okay. So that's the beeswax. Starting to set up a little bit of that transformer was right there at the surface I thought I had it completely covered but there must have been a little spot that wasn't absolutely perfectly covered that doesn't matter if you remember the tar there was a bunch of the you could see, really see the hump of the transformer so not a big deal so 
that's the cover as it's coming out. Now my plan is that I'm going to mask off the outer parameter of that and then paint the center portion of it black. Because uh, I've seen a lot of them in photos that look that way. I've seen them where they're just all brown and I've seen them where they're black. And I think the two-tone would look really nice on there. So that, that's what I'm planning on doing. Obviously i got to wait for the paint to all dry so I can mask it. And then, once I get that masked and painted black, I'm going to shoot all of these with clear coat. And uh, we'll go from there. It's starting to continue to set as that cools off. It'll solidify. You can kind of see around the edges it's starting to do that. But that, that works great. So, I can even see down inside there were part of that plate from that transformer apparently got cooler out here in the garage because it's not real warm out here today it's probably 60 but anyway that's where we're at I just got to paint the uh, two that are still on the chassis hey everybody I quick show you I got my um, tuning condenser knob finished this was that's the old one from the other um, 55C. That's the one that had the grommet on it. It was worn and cracked. I said I wasn't sure which one I was going to use. Anyway, I got a, get where you can see it, I got a faucet washer at my local Menards. I super glued it to it. I turned it so it would be the same diameter, slightly bigger. And I did that in my drill. I just chucked it in my on an ink pen and put a little tape on there to hold it tight. Spun it on a piece of sandpaper and got the right diameter. And there it is. Now it's ready to go. And I put a little lubrication on the screw and. Call that piece done. I thought I'd show you that. Okay, guys, I thought I'd just show you that um, interstage and audio transformer can after I got it done. So here it is, filled up with beeswax. It's all set. It's painted the brown that I'm going to be using. I haven't shot clear coat on it yet. I haven't decided yet if I want to shoot clear coat on that brown or not. I may or may not, I'm not quite sure. There's the other can, that's the one for the uh, condensers, the filter condenser can. So, those are ready to go back in. Right now I got the chassis out in the on the deck. I just painted the uh, two transformer cans on it. So, but um, start putting some of this stuff back together again. I still got to go in and check my resistors and change any bad resistors, but I think that'll about do it for this particular video uh, on the interstage uh, and audio transformer checkout and repair of that quality condenser. So, thank you guys for watching my channel, my station. So, from Greg at Greg's Vintage Workshop, thanks for watching. Tune in for part nine. Thank you.